All right, guys, welcome to another Full Circle Scalping live trade room. I am Ryan with ZenFX as usual. That definitely hasn't changed. The only thing that has changed is the market. So let's take a look at those and um, let's see what's been happening. Of course, as we know, Forex does have risk. So let's first jump on in to our favorite pair UJ and take a look at what's happened. Well, if we scroll back, let's look at our trade plan. So this was Tuesday when we had our last live trade room. My apologies that that did not get recorded. So if you are looking for that online, it's uh, it did not get recorded, so it's, it has not been posted. But what we talked about is we had this this zone that price had been bouncing, and our trade plan was basically if you know we hit here. We're gonna sell off of resistance. If we get down to this zone, we're gonna buy off of support. The only problem was the EMA is being completely twisted. And we were right here. And I was saying, as this was crossing, don't take this cross because it's a very weak cross. It's very, just like very, just stumbling over the finish line there. It's not very pronounced like this. But at the same time, these very pronounced crosses, you know, you're gonna be tardy to the party because the movement has already happened. So um, there was really no trade. And as price played out, like, there was no trade. And we have this really strong psychological level running through the middle of our zone right now, which is um, a small quarter. Okay, it's, it's 106 even. Okay, so it's very, very strong, small quarter point. So we have that. It's at the, our, our 100 level. So we wanna keep an eye on that, just keep it in the back of our minds. It's not a huge proponent of what we're gonna to do today, but if we see price reacting at that level, um, we're probably gonna know why. Now, as we scroll further forward, here's the opening of Asian session. As we, anyways, the, the point is, with the EMAs close together, we have the EMAs squeezed and bundled together. That means that we've got huge indecision in the market. We have no clear trend. It's very hard to take a scalp. We can't EMA scalp, okay? We can't zone to zone scalp because we don't have a, a defined trend, especially when this 200 is running right through the middle and price is just breaking above and below it multiple times. So when the 200 EMA is getting violated like that, it's a huge just red flag that there's so much indecision in the market for whatever reason. Uh, could be the, the lead up to NFP coming tomorrow with the US dollar. Uh, it could be that this right here was getting priced in. This was Bank of Japan high impact news, which we had talked about in our weekly analysis on Sunday when we were looking forward into trading this week in our longer term positions and just dropped, just fell out of the sky. Look at this though perfect touch and then retouch here to this psychological level okay and i've been talking a lot about these quarter point levels in our advanced course this week I've really been kind of bringing it to more to people's attention uh, we haven't talked about it much in the past but i'm trying to integrate this more into what we're doing and what you know i'm showing you guys but we had a perfect reaction here at this 50 level okay so that's right at 105.5, which for a yen pair is a 50 pip level. And if you're unfamiliar with the quarters, you know, I go over it in depth in our advanced course. I can, you know, we go more about how those work as institutional psychological levels there. But I just want to point this out that you can see price reacts almost to the pip, does not close maybe one pip below. It's what we call overshoot. And, you know, it's, it's not going to stop on a dime, but you can see a lot of times it does stop on that dime right there on that 50 level and then reverses. So we had that that move again, this, this consolidation all day yesterday could have just been this move being priced in or being prepped. Whenever there's a big move coming in the market, that's why a lot of traders like to trade these breakouts because when you see this sideways action, this consolidation, it means nobody wants to take a position yet because there's you know, a whisper in the air that a big move is coming, you know, or you just know that there's a big announcement going to come and nobody wants to take a position in that financial argument until they know what the announcement ends up being. 
So once we had the Bank of Japan make that announcement, then we had this breakout and all of the sellers came in and just drove price down, tried to get pushed back up. Look at how it reacts perfectly to this one hour um, support level. Well, it got broken, got turned into resistance, and then we had this tap and it was a perfect rejection at that level. So again, a good entry there. We're seeing support and resistance work time and time again, these historical levels. This is why we use this method because price respects these levels. Then comes down, comes back up, and eventually drops back down to this 50 level. So you had in, you know, if you were scalping in the Asian or the London session, you had this entry down to here, missed it. Again, this is why we put our, our, our take profits a pip or two above these levels you don't you don't set it right on this level okay because with spread sometimes you'll have these little heartbreakers that just that turn around right right before it hits your take profit and it came all the way back up and if you would have had a trailing stop you would have got stopped out so when you see this happen take your profit just exit be happy with what the market gives you be happy with what the market gives you. Don't demand that the market gives you something specific. Just have a target, and if it comes close, take that money, bounce out, and just be happy with that chunk. Don't try and get the full move, okay? You're gonna lose more trades than you'll win if you have that mindset where you, you have to hit that target. You have to hit that 50 level, you know? Even with this one right here, your spread, you would not have hit your take profit. You know, that one pip of spread, you know, would have kept your order, your take profit order from getting triggered. Okay, so keep that in mind. Keep those things in mind. You always have to keep the spread in mind or else you'll have these little heartbreaker trades and then it just goes right against you and you would have been out of that trade. So we have an entry here on the rejection of the one hour. You have another entry here on the rejection of the four hour and this is just very simple, just buying support, selling resistance. This this cushion, this buffer was no more than 10 pips. So even if you would have gotten in on this rejection candle here, okay, you would have set your stop loss above, you know, so like a, a pip or two above the one hour support, you would have been safe. That's why we have, that's why I call this the brick wall. Okay. Price has a very, very hard time getting past it until like right here, it smashes it. And we see price smashing through that, that, um, four hour and one hour brick wall, which was drawn the day prior. This was, this was drawn up the day prior. I didn't do this after the fact. Um, it comes through retests. And this is our classic example of our three types of entries. Okay. We have our aggressive entry here. This is the breakout. Okay. We have our conservative entry and let me just use these. We have our conservative entry, which is this one, the retest. Retest does not close below this brick wall or this four hour. So it doesn't get past the four hour. And then the confirmed is here. And you can enter that. It's a big candle though. You're gonna have to set a larger stop loss and you have to take these things into consideration as well. Okay, you have to take the fact that um, you have to play it candle by candle and then you have to assess, even though that's a confirmed candle, did it move up so much that now your risk to reward ratio is completely skewed? Because if you place it down here, that's 17 pip stop loss. You better be 100% just sold on your analysis that yes, it will continue back up. Because now you have to take a greater risk to reward. But that's completely up to you as a trader. And we have another, another pullback. So we have a double test, another, con another conservative entry, and then another confirmed entry. So you have that, and you have this other entry here. And then it just, you straight into profit. You have a little bit of drawdown on this first candle of about five pips, nothing much. Never comes back to this, this zone and just shoots to the moon. And you should take that profit. And then we get another almost perfect retest here. Again, doesn't ever close below this one hour. And look how it just absolutely respects this one hour support level. And then, you know, if you would have had your stop loss anywhere in this brick wall, then you would be safe. Shoots up for the end of the day. So you had two really good trades in 
New York session yesterday that went zone to zone. It was about a 30 pip zone. Okay, so you should have gotten some nice scalps out of that if you were trading in the New York. Now, for today, first, before I go any further, does anyone in the chats have any questions about the entries that um, we just took? And um, why do I always forget to mute Facebook? Um, does anyone have any questions about any of that analysis, any of those entries of the, you know, the candle entries, the rejections, uh, anything about that before we go forward, let me know. Um, if you do, I can also unmute you if it's a, just a question you want to ask out loud. But does anybody have any questions about that before we go into what's going on today? Looks like USD jobless claims came out. Um, not good, not bad, about medium. Okay, nothing too horrible going on there. Let's take a look at those because that's a big thing too, is that our, um, that our, uh, let me hide these. Our high impact news that just came out is gonna factor into what's going on right now. I hope everybody can see this. Sometimes it comes through, sometimes it doesn't. Um, looks like jobless claim came out a little worse than expected, but it's being reported as medium impact. Uh, Euro really didn't move anything much, but the US dollar took a little bit of a hit. Okay, so yeah, we'll take a look at how that's going to affect us. We have Big Bank of Japan news coming out. I covered this on Sunday as well. Big Bank of Japan news coming out. Don't be in any uh, yen trades uh, at uh, the opening of Asian session tonight because it is going to be um, very volatile. This is one of our top four things to look for, um, to look out for actually on um, in our analysis on Sunday. So if you're not getting a chance to catch those um, those videos, on Sunday nights, remember I do record them and I post them so that you can watch them at any time. Uh, I might possibly look into uh, having um, some, uh, so doing those live so that people can ask questions. But right now I'm just so pressed for time. I wanna just knock those out and get those done. Oh, shut up. Let's take a look at this. Little shameless promotion of uh, Mr. Robot. God dang, so I've been running it on the M15 and man, it's been having some good results. This loss right here was just because on Friday I didn't want to carry it over into the next day, so I just closed all of the open trades manually. Uh, I had done about 100 pips that day and I just took like a 10 pip loss because I really didn't care at that point in time. Look at this, uh, 129 pips uh, since Asian session open. Um, yeah, I've had this off most of this week because um, because when I had taken some huge, look at this, 29, I'm not really happy with that drawdown because everybody, we, we've been seeing the huge amount of um, movement in the euro. Um, it's just been out of control trending for the past couple of days. And I had to kind of just put it on hold for a while because this movement right here, let's take a look at this. Uh, do, do, do. Where, oh yeah, let me drop out, drop down to the four hour. So we all saw this huge spike up earlier this week. I mean, that thing was just, no, I'm sorry, we're looking at the four hour, this one. Yeah, this huge spike of a trend early in the week, just for no reason whatsoever, other than just just to do it, and then followed up by by the secondary spike here. Um, it does it does put it into a little bit more of drawdown, so I like to, you know, pause it so it doesn't try and stack on any more trades uh, until the market restabilizes, and then right around here, once we saw the market restabilize, and then we got this big pullback hit all the take profits and yeah, it was a beautiful, beautiful exit. 
So that's the only thing about EAs. You really have to be able to sit through some excessive drawdown, and that's why you have to use lower lot sizes is because they're, they're auto trading, but they're not smart. They can't recognize market conditions. They just work off the parameters that you give them. And in a trending market, it's just going to keep um, – depending on whether or not you have the, and I hate Martingale systems. I hate hold and pray because if you do hit a trending market, it can be, you know, you, you can hit an equity stop very easily. Um, but so you kind of have to monitor. You can't just turn an EA off and walk away. There's no EA in the world that you can do that. Um, that doesn't take some type of excessive drawdown. There are some that can trade their way out of it, but man, you better be prepared to take that drawdown. So that's why you have to use very, very small lots, slow growth. Um, but like I was showing somebody earlier today, um, the strategy that I've been using as far as just turning it on during the first couple hours of the opening session and using the M5 time frame with like one or two pairs and just letting it take one good trade and then shutting it down one to 2% equity growth a day has been working really, really well. And that's a great way to avoid that drawdown because if you see these big spikes, you just don't turn it on. And that's how you kind of um, smart monitor that type of EA. And we can see our EA trade, our e sorry, EU trade that we had entered in earlier this week. Um, yeah, we're still up 56 pips. We have not gotten to our take profit two level. We hit take profit one. We did not hit take profit two, which is way up here at 126 pips. But, you know, a good 56 pips up, really not much to – not much to worry about, but we are going to want to close out all trades by the end of at least London session tomorrow um, because NFP is just going to come in and wreck your trades, especially EU. EU is definitely hit hardest by, by NFP. A lot, of the higher, a lot of the gamblers come out on NFP. Okay, so that being said, here is our um, UJ trade for to or our plan for today. Very similar to what we had on Tuesday, unfortunately. Just a lot of confusion. Look at how the EMAs are all bundled. They're now they're bundled along this psychological level, and so we have all of this just bundled up. Look at this, just all of this bundled together. Okay, and it's it's really um, it's really just indicative that we have not only traders um, just very hesitant to take a position leading up to that big Bank of Japan news that I showed you a couple minutes ago, but also because of NFP. So not only is the Japanese yen going to be affected at the beginning of our Asian, well, not the beginning, but about four hours into Asian session, they're going to make that big announcement and then have a press conference afterwards to explain their rising or lowering of their interest rates. They're probably going to actually keep it right where they've been uh, the same way they've done the last 13, 14 um, times. But they're going to make that announcement, and they're going to talk about it. It's going to affect the yen probably dramatically, no matter what gets announced. And uh, everybody's just waiting for that to happen. That's why you see just barely any movement. What's the range here? We have 30 pip range since the opening of the Asian session last night. That is just – that's a big – big breakout sign. So we have range here. We have the top of our range. We have the bottom of our range. And this is where you'll see a lot of breakout traders um, work is where now, I mean, we have this tight, tight range. Usually you're only looking at Asian session. Um, usually you're only looking at, let me pull this down just a little bit. I'm going to change the properties on this so we can see it a little better. Pale green. Let's do that. Okay, so we have that. A lot of times you will get traders just looking at just this, just this Asian range. This is right about, honestly, this is probably right about where Asian range stops. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is right about midnight here. No, midnight's right about here. But you get this consolidation in Asian, and now we've had a little bit of consolidation after that came right back up. It's basically stayed in this box that whole time. And so you see a lot of traders will do a breakout strategy with a place of pending order, buy stop, sell stop. And as soon as the market breaks out in a direction, their order will be activated and then they'll just 
take that breakout because the idea is that if it breaks out, it's going to break out in a big way. Think of this as like just energy, just being generated, you know, just, um, just in a the condensed, just energy being condensed and, and added to and added to and, and more tension is being added to this price movement. The more that it stays in this range, the more tension it, like a, a rubber band being pulled back further and further and further, the more it stays in. And so that kinetic energy of price, once, once it builds up, once it finally releases in a direction like here, it's going to blow out of there in a big way. Okay. That's, that in essence is the breakout trading strategy. And you know, there's, I don't, I don't personally trade breakout strategies. I, I find them unreliable um, because there's always the very big possibility of a fake breakout and then your order gets activated and goes right back against you and stops you out. Uh, but it's, it's, it's a, you know, it's a lot like gambling. You're just, you're flipping a coin, you're playing roulette, you're betting on either red or black and you're hoping that, you know, your number comes up. And if not, you know, it's just either, a, it's very binary. Either you win big or you lose big, no in between. Okay. So, um, oh, sorry, Carmen, is that Mr. Robot running 24 hours, setting at 15 minute and take profit at 10? Yeah, yes, it is. That's the high risk account. And I have that running on, it's a thousand dollar account. Um, I'm trying to run it through, I turn it off during high impact news or anytime I see the market um, starting to trend very wildly. Um, hopefully I'm not in too much uh, drawdown at that point. I have an equity stop set on there at 35% so that if the account takes more than 35% drawdown, because I, I don't like to see any more than that. Um, but yeah, it's set at one mini lot for uh, that thousand dollar account. So it's trading at mini lots. So it's a dollar a pip. Um, that's 1% uh, risk per trade at $10, uh, 10 pips take profit. Um, and then, yeah, as it, it, it's just, it's, um, you know, those, the drawdown is that it will stack on trades um, due to the Martingale type of system that it uses. Like I said, I, I hate Martingale, especially for, uh, I don't, I would never do it manually trading. I see people that do that in their manual trading that, you know, we, we call it uh, hold and pray for a reason because you, you have to add positions to move the stop loss or to move your take profit up with it. So, you know, the way that it works is you take a position like a, a sell order here. And then as the market moves up, your take profit is here, right? Say 10 pips down. Um, as the market moves against you to compensate for the drawdown that you're taking from this initial position, it stacks a second position on, and you can control all of those settings in the in the EA, you know, you can tell it no more than this many positions, no more than this drawdown. I mean, you can set it to whatever your risk appetite is, but by setting this stacked position up, um, now the take profit gets moved up to like about here because now you add in this position and this position and the total has to reach 10 pips, right? Does that make sense? So you can also turn the Martingale off. There's, there's no, you know, you can run it any way that you want. The, if you're running it in short bursts, right? If you're running it just for a couple hours at a time until you get about, you know, your 10 to 15 pips for the day. Um, yeah, turn the Martingale off um, and just let it do its thing. Uh, no issue there. But if you're gonna let it run for 24 hours a day unmonitored, you kind of have to use the Martingale because, you know, in the, like in this scenario, if price moves against you and it just keeps going and going and going, it may pull back. I mean, it will pull back eventually, right? But it's never gonna come back all the way down to here. You have to get these stacked positions on to have a take profit that has a higher probability of getting hit. You know, that's how Martingale systems work. And you know, I'm very open about the fact that this EA, it does work off of that type of a system. You can adjust it. You can turn it off if you like. Um, but the EAs, that's kind of the way they work by nature. The only other, there's three main types of EAs, anything else either that doesn't fall into this category, 
does not give you very good returns or just doesn't pass modeling quality. You have your martingale, you have grid, which works off of kind of the same method of a grid system where it keeps, you know, you have price levels on a grid and it'll take positions based on that grid. Um, and then uh, the was martingale grid and hedging. The only other type is hedging. And that's a, that is, uh, I have a hard, I have a problem with hedging as well because then the EA takes based on the ma mathematical algorithm, it will take a position opposite to the, your losing position. So, you know, it's just, it's just like what it sounds like. If you take a, a cell and it goes against you at a certain point in time, it'll then take a buy position here. And then if price keeps going up, uh, it offsets this. And then your take profit is probably somewhere in here to where once the offset of this position and this position equals 10, then it, it closes both. That's how hedging works, right? If price ends up coming back down, then it meets in the middle and at about zero, it'll, if it's a smart hedging program, it'll close your one position that's um, counter trend and let the other trending position eventually hit take profit but there's no guarantees that that trend will continue and you know you can see the inherent risks in all of that right so those are the three types all EAs are going to fall into one of those three um, and you know people as much as people want you know hate using martingale systems for an EA it's almost a necessity I would never manually trade that way it's ridiculous but if you're using mathematical algorithms and calculations, then it, it's, it tends to make a little more sense. Yeah. So anyways, that's just a, a quick uh, down and dirty on, on how those work. I lost my train of thought what we were going to talk about next. Anyways, the, the trade plan for today, <laughs> we, got way, we got way off, off the rails on that one. Um, oh, I was going to mention uh, version 2.0 of Mr. Robot is going to be coming out later this week. I'm very excited about it. Uh, I'm getting it back for, uh, from the developer. Um, and then, I, of course, I have to test it. I have to make sure that the coding is correct. But I'm adding in, um, I'm, I'm adding in a little more robust equity stops option. So you can make sure and you can set your own equity stop because that's very important. Um, you can already right now, but I'm um, adding in uh, also uh, a high impact news calendar, a little widget that'll go in the corner of your EA screen on the chart. And that way um, you can set it to high impact news for just that pair. And it'll show you everything that's coming up within the next uh, 12 to 24 hours so that you can kind of time your outages of your EA a little better. I thought that'd be just really neat um, to do. It, it costs a little more to have the coder put that in but I think it's just going to make the EA better overall. And it, uh, the EA is going to stay the same price. I'm not going to increase the price. It's just something I wanted to add for, for you guys. Um, and then just make the EA look a little snazzier. So that's going to be coming up. Anyways, enough about EAs. The, the trade plan for today is um, really, I'm, I'm going to say stay out of the market today. That's really my biggest. Look at how sideways everything is. You know, we can set this trade plan where we still have this brick wall. If you come up here, you might be able to get um, a sell off of this resistance. If we see price break down through this psychological level, you might be able to take a quick scalp back up to this psychological level, okay? Back up to here. I wouldn't advise going any farther than that. And that being said, the risk to reward ratio isn't worth it. Okay, um, even good setups, before you take the actual trade, you have to weigh what is the risk to reward of this specific trade. Like we talked about over here, okay? You do have the proper setup, especially when you break through this 200 EMA, it's very, very strong likelihood that price will continue on upward. But you have to weigh it, where if you enter in here, right? And you have to set a stop loss that's 16 pips down. That's not the best trade. 
and we only want to take the best trades. If you want to, if you want to take that trade, recognize that you're risking more than the, the capital that you've allotted in your trading plan. Like recognize that you're taking a high risk trade and you're breaking your trading rules. And if you want to break your trade rules, then that's a whole nother discussion that we need to have. But it's totally up to you as a trader. Sometimes some people, you know, every, I, I still do it every once in a while. I take these trades and I'm, I know that I'm gambling and I'm willing to take the gamble and I'll just use a lower lot size because I want to, I want to, I'll be, you know, it's like for the sport of it. You know, I just want to take that trade and be in it and see how it plays out. And just in my mind, I say to myself, if I lose this one, I lose, you know, I, I'll just, the money is, I'll just consider the money already gone and I'm just paying for the entertainment of seeing it play out. I recognize I'm not following my trading plan and it, I don't add those trades into um, my trading journal as far as uh, um, trades that have been do documented trades, as far as my documented trades, right? It's, it's more for fun. It's like, it's, it's just for the sport of it. But recognize when you're taking those trades. If this is a serious trade that you're putting the, you know, your 2% of your equity up against and you're on a live account, you know, and it's, it's no joke, this is, for, this is for reals, this is for keeps, then make sure you're doing that due diligence of knowing how much risk you're taking before you finally click that button in. And some trades you're just going to have to pass. Okay, some trades you will just need to pass on and, uh, you know, just let it go. So that's just my, that's my advice for the day. Uh, the, we, all, we have tons of setups that happen all the time. You don't have to take every single one of them. You know, choose your trades, be, be picky. It's okay to be picky, okay? You know, be like a really hot chick. You know, you don't have to tra take every guy that hits on you, you know, that just comes by. You know, pick and choose, be extremely picky, extremely picky. So. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean for that to come across as sexist. Um, anyways, all right, just checking these last couple things. That's it for today. Um, I don't want to keep you guys here too long. We have a lot of things that are setting up today. Um, I've got a ton of things to do. I've got three more videos that are coming out today and tomorrow for our price action course. Um, so again, if you guys are interested in taking the, the price action course, learning a little bit more about long-term setups, intraday swing setups, like you know, I've been putting out in the uh, Forex channel, the Telegram channels. Hit me up. Um, still working on that. Also, the website. Again, it's coming along slowly but surely. Um, so we'll have, um, I'll have the EA. I'll have Mr. Robot on there. Um, I will have uh, the full detailed price action course uh, details on there. We'll have a ton of free videos. Um, there'll be a members only login section and you'll be able to access the course through that. Um, you'll be able to sign up for signals there, um, as well as mentorship, uh, which mentorship is changing a little bit. Um, I've been running into some issues with, um, trying to chase people down to finish the, their four mentorship sessions. So I'm going to change the structure of that. Instead of it being $150 for four sessions, I'm just going to do a session by session. And just one session, it's $50 per session. It's an hour. It's recorded. We'll talk about whatever you want to talk about. And then that way, um, you know, we don't have to chase you down to finish the last couple sessions or anything like that. I know people get busy. And then we can just do it, you know, one at a time. It's not a big thing. Um, like, I'm not upset with those people at all. Don't get me wrong. I absolutely understand that uh, people get busy with their lives. Believe me, I, I definitely understand. Um, so that'll all be set up. Um, I know we had talked about there would be a second EA uh, called the Zen Trader that was possibly going to be for sale. Uh, I know it's, I don't know if anybody's been paying attention the last couple of days. Um, Chad, unfortunately, is no longer with us. He and I have had a, a mutual agreement to go our separate ways. Uh, there's no animosity between us. You know, I wish him all the best. He's just got other things that he's focused on right now. Um, and he had brought that to the table. So he's taking that with him. It's, he's taking it off the table. And that's completely like we, we completely agreed on that. This, uh, 
that was an amicable agreement between the two of us. Um, that's his intellectual property as well as the crypto courses. He's going to take those with him as well. Um, so those are those are the biggest uh, things that I've been um, grappling with this week, trying to get all of those things finalized and everything. So, um, so Mr. Robot basically will be the only EA that we'll have for sale on the site. And if I do find, come across any that are, I find worthy enough um, through back testing to offer later on in the future, then uh, I'll let you guys know. But that's, uh, that's everything that's happening up, up to this point. So that being said, I'll let you guys go before I do. Is there, does anybody have any questions that uh, they have before we wrap up this session? Please let me know now or forever hold your peace. Oh, also I'm still, I'm still back testing um, the Ajimat, the new Ajimat template. I'm, and it's just, I've got so many things to do. I've had barely any time to really run that through, but um, I'm still uh, back testing that. So as soon as I get a, a better idea on what's going on with that, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, I will, I will know. Ooh, EU is dropping like a stone. Let's take a, what EG? Yeah, let's take a look at that. Let's see how our trade's playing out. Mm, mm hmm. Yeah, that is not good. Uh, this is a very low risk trade though. We're really, we're only risking 20 pips on this. So Euro news came out. Yep. Yep. And we're getting a we're getting a break of our trend line. All right. Um. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and say. I don't know. That's a. We are getting a test of this trend line. Let's see how this hour plays out. This could just be a initial reaction to the news that came out. Let me take a look at the news that just came out. Let's look at our economic calendar. I didn't. I wouldn't think that any. Yeah, there's really no high impact news that came out for the pound or the or the euro like just well I guess this monetary policy happened that was an hour ago I don't expect anything to be still happening after that point um, yeah I'm gonna say that we should for 20 pips I want to stay in and see how this plays out if, if we get a break of this 61.8 we'll know it's invalid and uh, we'll see about possibly closing out early but we've already had two taps to it and we've got a small bit of cushion and this level of support which is very minor but again this is very uh it's a very low risk trade we're only risking 20 pips to see how this plays out um so well, we'll see we will see yeah we didn't get take profit one hit so yeah, that thing's dropping pretty quickly. I th I'm pretty sure we'll know by the end of this hour whether or not we should uh, stay in or jump out. EG's just really not not playing out today. And let's take one look at GU. Ba, ba, ba. Oh, is Draghi speaking now? Yeah, the follow-up to the announcement. That's probably why. Mm, GU is, is dropping. Okay. That's what it is. Is... Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you would think that. Let me take a look at this. Yeah, it's so odd. It, this rarely happens. This is almost, I don't know. So it, it looks like the pound is getting stronger and it's crush. you know, um, or it's getting very, very weak against the dollar. The dollar is pushing back very strongly against the pound. But then if we look at the pound and the euro, then the uh, the pound is uh, crushing the euro as well. It's very weird to see um, a pound quote pair dropping at the same time that a pound base pair is also dropping. But I guess it's just that's the overall strength. Is a stronger. It's weak. It's weaker than the dollar, but stronger than the euro. So go figure that. But again, it's probably uh, because uh, Mario Draghi is speaking right now. This could just be a reaction to that, and then we could still see it rebound off of this trend line or off of this um, retracement level. You never know. We never know. But our risk to reward off this trade is great. So if, we, if we're out 20 pips, we're still up very much for the week. I mean, we just crushed it on GJ earlier this week. So 
Um, let's see here. Do I have a video on the Agimat template? I had one that I put out. I have a couple that I've put out as far as using it in a live trade room um, and then a follow-up based on the old template. The new one just got released uh, two, a week ago, last week. Yeah, it just got released last week and it has a new system to it. Um, and let me talk about that real quick. And this is what I'm trying to test out to see if it's any good at all. So uh, basically, they've he took away the old simple moving average, which was uh, either a 10 or a 12. I can't remember. I think it was a 10. And he's replaced it with this new indicator called the advanced price line or something like that. But it moves very similar to that old moving average. And the idea is that you go into your um, your preferred time frame. Uh, I've heard so far that like the one hour, the four hour, and the daily work best for this type of strategy. Um, oh, I thought I launched it, but I guess I did not. Let me get this launched. I'll show you on my own template. Um, and then you use the Heikenashi candles, and basically you wait for both the black and yellow arrow and the white arrow to print because he's taken that strategy of using the binary option template, merging it with the Forex uh, template. And one of the great things about the new template is that you get Maxwell's equation included in the, uh, in the, uh, the pro template, which before you did not get that. Before you had to purchase this, the template the template separately and then copy over that indicator which a lot of people they were they were, they were not very happy about um, but uh, now you get it in just one template you don't have to buy them both oh that's there we go there's our there's our uh, MetaTrader 4 connection sign I'm really ma I'm maxing out the processor right now so we can see a lot of slowness all right so let's see here I've got this nice little change templates all you have to <laughs> you have to reapply the templates every time you open it and close it or else um, or else you will just not there reinitialize okay so you see you get Maxwell's equation now standard and the the idea is um, and let's take a look at one of these that has printed recently. Okay, like EU, GU, GJ, these are all good examples. Let's take a look at um, EU, maximize this. So the idea is like I have this running on the H4 because uh, the higher time frame seem to work better. And the strategy is this is the new, uh, what does he call it? Where is, it? no, that's not right. There it is. That's a little bit messy, but I'll, uh, I'll fix that maybe later today. So the new strategy is he has this, this indicator here. And, uh, it's the Agimat Angular Momentum. Oh, I'm gonna adjust this. I don't like the dotted. Not personally. There we go. Okay. So the idea is when you get a black and yellow box and then a white, you wait until you get a Heikenashi candle that closes completely above this. And you have Maxwell's equation telling you, giving you the thumbs up that yes, price is continuing to go up. And then you enter on this next candle. Okay. And then Obviously, this would have been a buy. And the strategy is that you look for only like 10 to 20 pips maximum. You have a, about a 20 pip stop loss. And it's kind of like intraday scalping, I guess, is you just take that and then you have the option of taking maybe half of your position off at that take profit level and, uh, and then setting a runner, you know, which I, I'm always a big fan of. You know, you take your like take 50 to 80 percent at your first take profit and then let the rest go. And then that way you're securing profit 
and also not cutting your profit short. You're letting the other one run at a, at a break even stop loss. And so it's risk free. So you'll know you, you won't have that like regret where you, if it keeps on climbing, you're like, ah, I missed out on all that profit. Um, and then also if it reverses, you have that security that, okay, I already secured most of my profit and the rest of it's risk free. So it, it's, it's the best of both worlds. So you're scaling out of your positions. You don't have regret either selling too early or, you know, closing too early. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, I, pff, you and me both, man. Yeah, I, I, I bought them both as well. Uh, I, <laughs> I don't foresee him throwing us out a, uh, a, um, a, a refund anytime soon. But for those of you that haven't purchased the template, um, yeah, now anybody going forward does get that. It gets all of this in one template. Um, you know, you can still use the harmonic scanner MEBS. I mean, <laughs> you could still use it, but, um, and of course, if anybody needs the, the links to, to those, just let me know. Um, actually here, let me, uh, let me post this. If you guys don't have it, ba, ba, ba. Uh, and you want to check it out, there's a link to go to his website to check it out. Um, I've, I've been talking with a guy. Um, I think his name is uh, Uncle Lee or something like that. He uses this exclusively. Like this method, he uses this method. That's all he trades by. And he swears up and down that he has like a 90% win rate just taking 10 to 20 pips on these higher time frames and then jumping out. So I can't vouch for that. I'm just, like I said, I'm still back testing this to see if it's legit or not. Um, but so far, most of the people have given some pretty good uh, reviews on it. Oh, look at that. We're getting that night. Look at that. A little tap to the 61. A little rejection. Yeah. Getting some nice rejection. Like, yeah. Yeah, that's him. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, if you want more information on uh, the way he does that, it's the exact same. But it, if you're looking for a very detailed uh, description on how to use this system or on it working in general, just go to Dennis Buchholz's uh, Facebook page, or I'm sorry, his YouTube page. Um, he has a Facebook page as well. But um, yeah, just Dennis Buchholz on YouTube. Let me actually pull that up. I'll show you exactly who he is. Um, and he has tons of videos uh, on how to use these templates and a, a 40, mi 40 minute long video on how to use this new 2018 one. Um, this is him right here. Yeah, this is Dennis. So um, yeah, he's not too bad of a guy. Let me uh, here. I'll drop that in the link in the chat as well. In case you guys want to look him up. Yeah, I like, you know, Lee seems like a good guy, but we got off on the wrong foot when I first met him because he jumped into the, he jumped into the trade room. Well, into the uh, post about the trade room and started um, hard selling his 90% win ratio. Um, and I thought he was just trying to, uh, I thought he was just trying to sell something. You, would, you guys would be amazed at how many people I have to block a day that just come in trying to sell managed accounts and binary options and stuff. And so uh, I, I was a little bit rude to him at first. I was, you know, like, you know, go kick rocks. And I deleted his comment. And then Chad came back to me and was like, no, this, this dude's actually, he's a, actually a decent guy. And then I started watching some of his videos and I felt bad. So I went to try and um, talk to him on Facebook and he had blocked me. I was like, oh man. So if anybody out there talks to Uncle Lee, uh, tell him that, uh, that Ryan apologizes and uh, you know, if he wants to unblock me and become part of our, our group, he's always welcome. And uh, I, feel, I always feel bad when I'm rude to somebody that doesn't deserve it. So. <laughs> so I'm sorry I came at him sideways like that. So it was my bad. I'm always the first to admit that when I'm in the wrong. So, you know, all my ex-wives will probably disagree. 
but that's neither that is neither here nor there i plead i plead the fifth i plead the fifth all right you okay sounds good maps all right guys i'll wrap this up again uh we ended this 30 minutes ago and from my uh my my loquaciousness have extended this uh, an, up to an, an hour again i try to wrap these up at 30 minutes and they always end up being an hour i don't know how i, I pull that off so um yeah <laughs> yeah yeah I'm not, don't ask me how many it's I don't, i'm not i'm not proud of it okay but uh you know all right we all we all make mistakes we all make we were all young once so okay ej looks like it's really not playing ball so my advice if we close below the 61.8 in seven minutes if you guys are taking this trade let's go ahead and just take a 15 pip loss and call it a day if it if it goes 15 it's probably going to go 20 so uh, if it if it jumps back up, we can look to re-enter, but might as well just might as well cut our our uh, profit or our losses short as usual. I'll put that out in the Telegram group as well. Um, yeah, no, no, not not a player. Just uh, oh, man, my my life reads like the worst country song you've ever heard. But you know, <laughs> you know, soldiers do not have high, uh, you know high marriage mortality rates, I guess you could put it that way. All right, guys, great session today. If you guys have any questions, definitely hit me up on Telegram or Messenger or Facebook. Always happy to uh, help you guys out with whatever you're struggling with in your trading um, journeys. Um, I'll go ahead and wrap it up. Um, yeah, I guess you should have, Brian. Yes, you should have. <laughs> um, so I will bid you guys adieu. Uh, great session. And uh, we will pick it up again on, uh, on um, next Tuesday. Uh, look for our weekly analysis to come out this Sunday. Again, I'll go over all our major pairs and what our setups are doing. And um, again, yeah, if you guys have any questions, let me know. You guys are very welcome. Uh, appreciate all your kind comments in the chats. Uh, again, I've been Ryan with ZenFX. If you are new, please follow us on Facebook and in our YouTube channels. Descriptions are or the uh, links are in the descriptions to this video. Please give us a like or subscribe on YouTube if any of this has helped you. And I will catch you guys in the next trade room. Until then, trade well. And as always, let's get those pips. All right, take care, guys.